Well, here we are in the foyer of the House of Commons once again. It is a few minutes after question period. It is that daily spectacle that I know you are addicted to, especially all you poor people who sit at home and do nothing but watch CPAC all day. I know who you are. But there is a story behind question period. It's more than one side asking questions, the other side talking about 13 years of Liberals. There is a strategy, believe me, on both sides, and people spend a lot of time getting prepared for that 45 minutes a day. And on the Liberal side, on the opposition side, no one is more engaged than Ralph Goodill, former Minister of Finance, longtime member of Parliament. He is House Leader of the Liberal Party. And Ralph, how important is QP to your side? Well, question period is the is the the high intensity, high energy, high coverage part of the day. Uh, in some ways, that's a bit unfortunate because uh, if if people could could sit in the balcony and watch the whole parliamentary day and watch the work that goes on in committees, uh, they might come away with a much different impression of the place because uh, there is a lot of very serious conscientious work that gets done outside of that intense 45 minutes of, of question period. But from 2.15 until 3 o'clock, uh, every day except Friday, and of course Friday uh, is from 11 till, till 12, but for those 45 minutes, uh, all the political eyes within the Ottawa bubble uh, are, are focused on uh, on question period and that's the opportunity for uh, for the opposition uh, in in its most uh, pointed way uh, and sometimes uh, less than polite way uh, zeroes right in on what they consider to be the biggest issues of the day the things that are of greatest concern to Canadians the things that probably betray the government's greatest uh, vulnerabilities and as people who have watched this process for the last couple of weeks will know there are two issues that have dominated question period not just for us uh, but also for uh, for the other opposition parties, and that is uh, how the Afghanistan mission seems to become cross-threaded on a number of issues, especially the treatment of detainees, and then secondly, uh, the the announcement of the so-called Green Plan or or the government's new environmental plan to deal with climate change, which has uh, uh, critics across the country just up in arms of being no plan at all. Now, Ralph, from from the point of view of a of a humble member of Parliament, I mean, to share with people that. I get up at the crack of dawn, try and think of some brilliant question I want to ask, <laughs> email it to your assistant. Then there are mysterious meetings that are held during the morning. Uh, you go and uh, assess, I guess, what is going to be the strategy for the day and end up deciding what questions are going to be asked, what, what topics, who's appropriate to ask them. I guess there's a whole m range of, of items that go in to determining how question periods can be made up. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it, it, it's, a, it's a quite a complicated process, but one that, uh, that just constantly moves in, uh, in rapid-fire pace through the, through the day. Uh, I meet at, uh, at 8 o'clock every morning with my own staff uh, and with the uh, uh, representatives of the WHIPS office, uh, as well as uh, representatives of the Liberal Research uh, uh, Bureau, the Caucus Research Bureau, and the Leader's Office. And we do a quick scan of, uh, of uh, what are the major sto stories in the news, what other information is coming to us from non-media sources about important topics that need to be raised in question period. And we make a rough calculation about, about uh, how we might order questions and what seems to be at the top of the list. Are we all on one topic today? Uh, during the course of, of those 45 minutes, um, questions are segmented into 35 second clips so you don't get a lot of time to say much when you're setting up your question uh, so it's pretty important not just to do a one hit on one question and then change subjects you've got to have a series of questions to to develop the story if you will uh, and we always have many more topics than we could possibly uh, deal with uh, so that's the toughest thing we have to do during the day is is uh, ration out the topics so we go from that preliminary dis discussion to a broad broader uh, discussion with more members of caucus and more advisors from the uh, uh, from the staff side and then we actually have a uh, a rehearsal at one o'clock uh, to bring people in uh, go over the wording of their question uh, how have they phrased themselves are they on point and so forth to make sure that when the questions are asked in the House of Commons they are uh, they are on target and extracting the best possible information. Now you've been on the government side for many more years and much more time <laughs> than you've been on the opposition side. Yeah. So give us a glimpse as to what the government ministers are doing Well, the opposition guys are rehearsing questions. What are they up to? They, they are doing the, uh, the mirror opposite of that. 
Uh, there will be a tactical group or a strategy group that meets uh, uh, either in the House Leader's office or in the Whip's office or in the Prime Minister's office. First thing in the morning, they'll be going over all of the media from the night before, all the information about what's happening off the hill, the other things that might play into question period, trying to anticipate uh, what the opposition is going to, to ask. And uh, people will see the ministers coming into the House with these great big briefing books under their arms. That's uh, the assessment by them, their political staff and their departments about what's hot today and what you need to be ready for as a minister uh, because this, this could well be asked on the floor of the House of Commons. Uh, so today, for example, we had our first uh, six blocks of questions. We, we, get, uh, we get 10 during the normal course of question period. We did the first six on Afghanistan because that issue about the detainees and Canada's credibility internationally, uh, the security of Canadian forces overseas, that is the number one issue on the minds of, of uh, pretty well all Canadians these days. So we took the first six questions on that. We then uh, shifted over to the environment and Mr. Baird's plan or non-plan to, uh, uh, to, to, to deal with, uh, with climate change. Uh, and then toward the bottom of the order, we got on to a couple of other topics uh, that, were, uh, that were important but uh, probably not quite of the same priority as uh, climate change in Afghanistan. Now, how do you measure success? Is it by media clippings? Is it by how much uh, the, op the government shouts at, uh, at the questions? <laughs> uh, what generally, how do you determine if you landed that punch? Well, uh, obviously the, the, the way the media reacts is an important part of it. The feedback that, uh, that comes back to, to, uh, to MPs or to the leader's office or to my office uh, is also a very important consideration. Uh, in this day and age of, uh, of instant interactivity, which is, uh, which is a very good thing in the political process, you can tell within the space of a couple of hours whether you've uh, made an important point uh, or you missed the mark, or you could have said it better, or whatever. Because that feedback just comes in uh, spontaneously now through uh, through all sorts of electronic means, um, and and uh, we hear from our caucus. I mean, that in this in this political process, that is the single most important barometer there is, uh, and and. Uh, people who are running the strategy, I'm sure, on both sides of the house, whether it's government or opposition. Uh, you get your best uh, grassroots, main street, down-home reaction from the individual MPs riding by riding by riding who have to go back to those same voters who are reacting and try to get elected again. Last question, Ralph. Many people who come to the blog have made the comment in the last couple of months they get so frustrated when questions are asked and no answers are proffered. And I know the government's trying to avoid answers as much as we're trying to ask pointed questions. But for example, whenever I get up to ask a question now, all that happens is Peter Van Loan stands up and asks me to resign. Yeah. yeah. And that irritates people a lot. Do you sure think does. that ends up reflecting badly on the government I, I, for this lack of answers? I, I think it does. Uh, even though uh, it is called question period, not an answer period. And, and I know the I know the uh, uh, the common attitude among government members is well, uh, it, it, it's questions. We don't have to answer your questions. You go ahead and ask them, but we don't have to answer them. Uh, I think that wears a little thin with the with the public, especially when you're dealing with with really important topics. I mean, Canadians do want to know uh, what happens to Afghan detainees. Uh, they 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 want to know that uh, for two very critical reasons. Uh, if if um, uh, if, if, if Canada in some way is seen as floating the Geneva Convention, uh, well, we're putting our soldiers at risk because they are, they are uh, at risk from time to time of becoming prisoners of war themselves. And if Canada is, is floating the Geneva Convention, that's just an open invitation to our enemies and adversaries to, uh, to treat uh, uh, Canadians badly. Uh, and the government is fond of saying, uh, well, don't worry about those people. They're probably just all Taliban terrorists uh, anyway. Uh, well, I think Canadians uh, demand a higher standard. We do not want to descend to the level of those terrorists. Uh, and if we ever uh, imply that we are, uh, then we've largely given up the fight. So when you're asking serious questions about an issue like that, about Canada's stature in the world and the way that uh, a way that a very dangerous mission is being conducted, or climate change, which was way down in mm -hmm. in uh, the public assessment of what's important five years ago and now is way up there at the top of the heap. Uh, they they don't want 
government baffle gab. They want an answer every now and then. And I think if, if, over time, if there is this conf, constant government pattern of obfuscation and avoidance, uh, there's a political price to be paid for that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Listen, we're interested in your thoughts, too, on QP. I know from time to time we get a lot of impressions. But you know what? Tell me what you think of how this guy's doing, how the Liberals are doing in question period. Score to 1 to 10. Okay, let me know. I'll pass it on to Mr. Goodell. Please do. All right. Ralph, thank you. My pleasure, Guy. Thank you. Thanks for watching MPTV. Thanks.